but most importantly a personal relationship with the book uh this week in honor of my birthday which is 22nd august the day that this video will be releasing uh i decided to put out a list of books that i love to read these are specifically happy books uh easy to read really fun uh breezy reads and the aim is that you will be able to you know go through these books at length very fast and uh they won't be too much of a pressure on your head if you are already stressed out with something else or work or something like that so uh make sure to go through this list and pick out the books that you really like and that interest you and get to reading so in our list of 20 books 20 odd books uh happy books the first one that i'm going to be talking about today is one that a lot of people already know about people have read uh i think it's been made into a movie now as well uh but this is a really popular book and it's popular for a reason because it's really good uh it can you know really strike a chord within you that you didn't even know was possible it's going to make you laugh it's going to make you cry uh it's also going to be really sentimental uh but it's really fun to read so the book that i'm talking about is a man called ove by uh frederick packman if i'm saying that right uh the book is about a grumpy old man called ove who uh you know lives with his dog and he just lost his wife to cancer and basically it's about his life in his community and um the different tensions that are there in his community and how he sort of looks at life and world and the world around him uh so it's a really good book to read if you are just trying to read something very light and fun but something very emotional as well so check that out a man called ove Number 2 the second book that we're going to be talking about is also by Frederick Backman and this is one of the suggested books that I got uh from one of the people who listened to this you know podcast a lot so they said that this book is something that they really love and that was very funny but at the same time also had like a very interesting premise not a very like it's not a romantic book but it's very very fun to read and also very interesting So the book is called Anxious People and it's also by Frederick Backman. Uh so the basic premise is that there's been like an attempted robbery uh and the robbery basically didn't really turn out the way that the robber was expecting. So now there's a hostage situation uh and there's a bunch of people who are very twisted and have their own sets of um things going on while there's while they're being kept hostage uh and you know they get into a lot of arguments they get into a lot of mischief and it's very fun like the the robber is um <laughs> very weird in the sense that he doesn't really know what he's doing uh and it, it's just a mismatch situation but it turns out to be really funny so anxious people is one book that you should check out if you are in the mood for a good laugh Number 3, third book that we're going to be talking about is one that we have already discussed on our podcast before. Uh we went over it a couple of episodes back I think and it's one that I personally feel like it's one of my favorite books and it's not even fiction but it's really close to me and I think I really love this book a lot and I definitely want to go back to it uh a million times again. The book that I'm talking about is Becoming by Michelle Obama. So it's her memoir and uh it's basically the book about her life about how she grew up in chicago and you know after she met barack and her kids and even b- besides all of that like who she is you know as a person as a working woman as a black woman in america as the wife of the president um it's it's really nice to read in the sense that it you know gives you that little push and it motivates you if you know you feel like you're slacking a little bit at work or if you feel like you're slacking um otherwise in some other areas in your life you should pick up this book because she's a very inspirational person in general uh so yeah that's number 3 becoming by michelle obama number 4 the fourth book that we're going to be talking about is eleanor oliphant is completely fine by gail honeyman Now again this is a book that we have already discussed but I want to mention it here because it is one of the funniest books that I've ever read and that's saying a lot because 
you know when you read the book you know that it's going to be a little heavy because it deals with a lot of mental health uh issues it deals with a lot of it deals with mental illness really well um and there's you know there's a lot of it in the book there's a lot about loss and there's a lot about denial um it, it's about a complicated woman <laughs> named Eleanor Oliphant okay and you think she has a very organized very isolated life uh but in truth it's very very messy um and she's just trying to keep a float honestly but on the outside she seems totally fine but on the inside you know there's stuff lurking um it but it's told in a very funny way and Eleanor is a character that I promise you is going to stay with you once you finish the book and it's really really hard hitting. Uh again, it's a book that's going to make you laugh, it's going to make you cry, it's going to make you feel for the character a lot. Uh and it's also going to, you know, make you look at life in a really nice, positive, fun, wholesome way. Uh so Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Hanneman. That's going to be number 4. Number 5. The fifth book that we're going to be talking about is Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. Uh so this is one of the suggested books that I got and uh it's it basically deals with one particular thing but um it sort of also encapsulates a lot of other important aspects of living. Um Brené Brown is a researcher and you know she has researched for years um in act therapy which is acceptance and commitment therapy and so she talks about the essentials of ther- of act therapy which is you know vulnerability courage values uh, willingness and the fact that people need to accept who they are and come to terms with it and love and embrace that part of themselves she talks a lot about vulnerability and daring greatly is basically about that it's about you know having the courage to be who you are um about living a life that you are eventually very proud of that you feel satisfied with um and then greatly i believe gives you the tools to go on that path of self self discovery uh and figure out who you are and a way, figure out a way to embrace that part of yourself so then greatly by prene brown if you're in the mood for something um uh, really uplifting but also something that makes you ponder Number 6 the sixth book that we're talking about is Eat Pray Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Yes, we're going back to some really old school um I don't want to say cheesy. I mean it is cheesy, but we're going back to some really old school um girl flicks that chick flicks that they call. Um Eat Pray Love is a book about self discovery. It's a book about travel. Uh it's about love and making mistakes and you know finding yourself in third world countries uh <laughs> it's about uh, Elizabeth Gilbert's personal journey um into finding herself and and you know she travels to India she travels to Bali she travels to a lot of these you know really cool uh places interiors of these countries and and basically you know she has a lot of conversations with people that change her life and it changes the way she lives it changes her mindset it helps her find love and it helps her decide what exactly was important to her um so eat pray love is a book that you know is on every list when you talk about happy books or uplifting books or self discovery books so you know check it out because it still has something at the core of it that makes it shine through every time with readers of all ages and all genders and everything so check it out uh you can watch the movie as well but i would prefer if you read the book first <laughs> number 7 and the next couple of books that we're going to be talking about actually are going to be uh the classics we're going to be talking about uh you know the old school romance dramas that we read when we were probably in school or when we were teens uh the book that i'm talking about for number 7 is pride and prejudice by jane austen Uh yes we we can't <laughs> we can't get through any book list without mentioning this one Pride and Prejudice is always 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 going to be the go to book if you're looking for a really good romance novel if you're looking for a really good you know um self discovery novel as well I think you know a lot of Pride and Prejudice is about self discovery it's about you know figuring out yourself and and what you stand for and how to be assertive I think 
Pride and Prejudice taught a lot of people how to be assertive. So especially women and young girls. So if you're in the mood for a really good, you know, fun read, but at the same time something that is going to invest you uh, and and take you to a different time period and a different world, uh, make you want to wear those really large gowns with the corsets, this is the book for you. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Number eight. But before that, have you seen Sonam Kapoor's Aisha, the film that came out, I think, many, many years ago. I think it was 2008 or 10, maybe. Uh, and it was this really cool, it was one of those first, you know, chick flicks we had in India. It was a huge thing at the time and the songs were really cool. And there were these really long shots of makeup and women walking down aisles and whatnot. But if you know what I'm talking about, that book, uh, that movie is actually based on another movie that released uh, in the US, which is called Clueless. Um, and that movie was actually based off of a book called Emma by Jane Austen. Now, Emma is again a classic. It's been read and reread multiple times. It's been analyzed and people have, you know, poured over that book because it is actually so good. Um, and if you're a young girl or if you're someone who's just trying to, you know, grow up, like you're trying to figure out your place in the world, but you're also, you know, really young and you have an open heart and open mind uh, and you want to read some fun tales about people who messed up and who did weird things, but who also, you know, found love and really lived their lives fully. Emma is the book for you. It's it's the perfect book for young people. It's the perfect book for anyone who's looking for a little bit of romance, a little bit of fun, adventure. Uh, so yeah, read Emma and maybe then watch the films. <laughs> Number nine is another classic. It's a book that, oh God, I can't even like start with this book. I, I love it too much. Uh, it's To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Um, it's a book about childhood, it's a book about racial justice, it's a book about um, really heart-rendering father-daughter bonds, um, it's a book about family and community as well. So To Kill a Mockingbird is not really, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a fully, you know, happy-go-lucky book, even though a lot of people might say that it is. But for me, I think it's a wholesome book. It has the right amount of pain. It has the right amount of uh, love. It has the right amount of betrayal, injustice, and a lot of these complex emotions given to you uh, in really these small bite-sized uh, doses. So it's about, you know, Scout, uh, who's this little girl. She is, you know, living with her dad, who's a lawyer. Uh, she has a brother, she has an aunt, and she lives in a small community, and she is witness to a lot of injustice that happens in that community. And um, basically, it's all of that told through the eyes of this little 10-year-old kid, and how she views the world, how she views her dad, how she views her family, uh, what she does to change the world that she lives in, little by little. Uh, it's, it's a lot about, you know, just owning up for yourself and owning up for who you are and um, everything related to that you know it's 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 a really beautiful book if you go into it and uh, it's pretty easy to read as well it's breezy you can you know go through it in one sitting also if you're <laughs> ambitious uh, but yeah it's a book that will stay with you number 10 is a book that we have already mentioned and we we've you know we literally had our last podcast about this book but uh, this list can't, you know, won't be complete if I don't mention this book. It's Adventures of Tom Sawyer uh, and also uh, the Huckleberry Finn version of this book as well. So uh, both of these books by Mark Twain, I think are quintessential, you know, childhood books. Uh, so you have to read these, you know, uh, even though it's about, you know, boyhood and it's a lot about you know, machismo and, and trying to be a boy in a man's world <laughs> and a lot about growing up. Um, a lot of readers across genders can relate to this book and they find that they can relate to the characters in it. Uh, they love the world. I especially really love the world of this book. I love the community that the boys were going, growing up in. Uh, it's a little, again, it's a little small community. 
um, on the Mississippi River and they, they are very close knit. But Mark Twain also, you know, makes a lot of jokes about having a living in a community that's that small. Um, and a lot of people might relate to that, you know, a lot of people might relate to that kind of uh, satire. So if you're in the mood for, you know, fun, chilled out, completely chilled out reads, this is the one for you. Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn as well. Number 11 is an Indian classic, Room on the Roof by Ruskin Bond. Um, it's again a book about young adulthood, um, also about childhood, it's about growing up in uh, India. So that would be, <laughs> you know, really familiar to a lot of us. And it's about trust and bond actually. It's about this 17 year old Anglo Indian boy who's growing up in Dehradun. Um, and basically, you know, what his experiences are, what it means to uh, live in that city. And as you know, Ruskin Bond writes a lot about nature. So a lot of his books are very, very scenic. Uh, they have great imagery and you can really feel like you're in that world that he's writing about. So Room on the Roof, if you're looking for a really good uh, travel book, I mean, I think this qualifies as a travel book if you're traveling to the mountains uh, while you're reading a book. So <laughs> Room on the Roof by Ruskin Bond. Number 12 is another childhood classic and I personally <laughs> didn't want to include it in this list but a lot of people have really fond memories related to this book and they find a lot of love and find a lot of you know nostalgia related to it so it's worth mentioning it's the harry potter series by jk rowling um again it's a bunch of books so i don't expect you know you guys to have to really read through all of them but it, it'll be a good place to start and you can probably simultaneously watch the films as well and decide which one you like better uh, but yeah, the Harry Potter series are always something that you can go back to if you're in the mood for some really old school, nice, warm nostalgia. Sure. <laughs> Number 13 is The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. Uh, so this book is basically the premise is very simple. Uh, Gretchen Rubin wakes up one day and decides to be happy and she does everything possible to be happy if that means cleaning her closet if that means you know waking up and looking at the sun first thing in the morning if that means going out greeting someone uh, she does all of that so the book is basically described as a year-long experiment uh, on being just happy <laughs> so uh, it's one of the suggested books and I haven't read it yet and I want to get into it because it sounds really fun it sounds interesting it's I think it's written in the form of like a journal um, of like in the form of journal entries so that would be interesting to read as well and yeah I think you might find a lot of tips on how to be happy if that's something that you're thinking about Action. number 14 is another classic it's a childhood book it's a boyhood book it's also a philosophical book because it's about you know answering life's most important questions it's about uh, just understanding what life is and what purpose is and why we're all here what to do here uh, the book that I'm talking about is the little prince and I know that a lot of people have already read it but I didn't read it till like now <laughs> so I had no idea about this book so if you are one of those people uh, the little prince is something that you should try out it's about this boy who meets a lot of people and um, they answer his questions not his questions but they answer questions about life uh, so if you have a lot of questions about life, if you're wondering what your purpose is, if you're wondering who you are and what you want to do and, you know, if you want that motivation to just get up and start thinking about these big lofty things, this is the book for you. Um, Number 15 is another book about purpose. It's about finding your purpose, finding your drive, finding your values. Uh, not finding your values, but figuring out what your values are and then driving towards them. Uh, the book I'm talking about is Ikigai. It's, I mean, a lot of people have already read it because it's very easy to read. It's not like a fictional book or it's not about a story or in that sense. It's a very uh, clear cut, you know, guide, you could say, to healthy living and, and sustainable living as well. Uh, it basically takes you through why the people who live the longest live the longest it answers that question for you um, so it has a lot of you know helpful tools that you can incorporate in your life you know there's a lot of stuff about what you should eat um, to 
aid your digestion to to take care of your body what you should put in your mind uh, so that doesn't get too crumpled up you don't feel depression or stress or anxiety that often uh, and you know how to manage those so there's techniques for that uh, there's also a lot about community and coming together and why social interaction is so important so it deals with a lot of these things that basically tell you how to live a good life and and what to do about your body and your mind and all of these things so check out ikigai <laughs> number 16 is a special mention book because uh, the woman behind this camera which is my sister just said that all of these books that we've mentioned are useless before this one book that has Uh, had tremendous impact on her life which is the power of subconscious mind by joseph murphy and she believes that this is a book that you have to read if you need to get your life in order um and i personally seen it she did get her life in order so <laughs> um check this book out if you need to know all about the subconscious mind if you need to know how it works if you need to know how to control your mind how to control your emotions how to have a better grip on them so power of your subconscious mind by joseph murphy that's it for this video these are all the books that i wanted to talk about and i actually wanted it to be 20 books so in order of my 20th birthday 20 books that i'm recommending uh but i decided that i would let you guys decide what the next four books are for you uh what are books that you've read that really make you happy and that could be anything you know it could be like a really sad book or a really a uh, heavy book but in the end it has really good memories for you and when you think about it maybe something happened in your life that around that time when you were reading that book that made you very happy and you so you associate that book with happy memories you know if you have a book like that mention it and write to me i'm going to be very happy to learn about it and you could suggest it to other people that you know so finish this list off um suggest four more books that you love and that help you be a better version of yourself and um uh, thank you so much for tuning in these are all the books that i had i'm going to see you next week with another brand new episode um uh, and happy birthday to me thank you